but Sally Mae, Nelnet, Stalone, and all her homies gotta get off our back for the next six months. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna tell you all about it and what this means for you. Hi, I'm Shayna the Well Vibe, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt grow your income and build well. Student loans are probably the one thing that most people can agree on that is either a regret or it's something that is the bane of their existence and they wish that they could get rid of their student loans even just for one month. And I'm here to tell you that we can forget about our student loans for six months, y'all. You don't gotta worry about your student loans until September 30th if you have federal loans. I'm gonna break down what that all means for you and what you could be doing with your money during the meantime. The CARES Act is the reason why many of us are getting student loan relief for the next six months. But before I get into all the details about what this means for you, drop a money bag down in the comment section below to let me know that you are here. When I first heard about the relief that they were trying to provide to student loan borrowers under the CARES Act, I was super excited, mainly because I heard them talking about student loan forgiveness. But although that's no longer a part of the plan, there is lots of relief that student loan borrowers can expect to receive. But I wanna set some expectations because unfortunately, everyone isn't eligible for this relief, even if you have student loans. So if you have private student loans, you aren't eligible for this relief. And if you have federal student loans that are not backed by the Department of Education, then you also are not eligible. So you might be wondering, what do you mean by federal student loans that are not owned by the Department of Education? So a few years ago, student loans actually used to be managed and owned by banks, although they were federal student loans. And that program was called the FFEL Loan Program, also known as the Federal Family Education Loan Program. So if you have FFEL loans, there is a likelihood, especially if you were distributed this money before 2010, that you do not have federal student loans that are owned by the Department of Education. Then there are also other student loans that are actually owned by the Department of Health. And those loans are typically given to people in medical school, dental schools, and you know, health professionals that are seeking education. So those are two types of federal student loans that actually are not eligible for this program. But if you wait later on in the video, I wanna tell you exactly how you can become eligible for this relief under this program. So stay tuned for that. Most of us are gonna be impacted in two primary ways. And that's with our payments and also the interest that will accrue on our student loans from March 13th all the way until September 30th, 2020. And so that's approximately six months of release from payments and interest that will accrue on our federal student loans. And that is such a blessing, y'all. Such a blessing, and I'm so excited because I am gonna take full advantage of this relief to put me in a better financial state and you can do the same. Let me break down the student loan payment suspension first. So that means that all federal student loan borrowers, no matter what payment plan you're on, that can mean the standard payment plan or income-based repayment plan or even a graduated payment plan, those all qualify for the student loan payment suspension through September 30th, 2020. So yes, even if you're on pay as you earn, repay, or income-based or income contingent, you qualify automatically for this student loan suspension on your payment all the way until September 30th. So you should be able to log on to your student loan servicer right now onto your account and see that your payments have been suspended until September 30th. This news is even more awesome for people on the public service loan forgiveness plan. And the reason for this is because all the payments that you would have made from March 13th to September 30th, 2020, 
which are essentially six payments, will still be credited to your 120 payment plan, although you don't even have to make any payment. So the reason why this is awesome is because you only technically need to make 114 payments now, and you are essentially paying less money on your student loans before they are completely forgiven. Now you might be wondering what happens if you happen to make a payment during this six month payment suspension. So let's say your payment was due on March 15th and the CARES Act went into effect in on March 13th, 2020. So you might be wondering what happens to that payment because you might really need that money to now buy groceries or pay your rent or do something else because of the financial impacts of the pandemic. So what you can actually do is request a refund for that money because a payment was not due during that time. Now, let's say you do still want to make payments during this payment suspension. You actually can still do that. And it might actually benefit you a lot because of the second thing that I'm gonna talk about in this video. The second benefit that most of us will receive as federal loan student borrowers because of the CARES Act is that we will not accrue any interest on our student loans from March 13th until September 30th, 2020. So this is awesome. It's essentially like having a grace period or a deferment, similar to like when you were back in college and you didn't have to pay any interest on your loans. And so this means that your balance is kind of frozen in time and you won't have interest accruing daily on your student loans. So this is an awesome thing to take advantage of. And you can do this in two different ways. So if you are a person that is has been financially impacted by the pandemic because you may have lost your job or lost some income because of payment reduction in your salary or your hours or your you know hourly wages you might decide that you don't want to make any payments at this time and the reason why this is good is because you also won't be accruing any interest typically when you don't make a payment you'll still accrue interest and you'll accrue late fees but that's not happening during this time so you're essentially freezing your student loans in time and so whenever you are able to pick back up and make a payment is it's as if nothing ever happened and you could just pick up back where you left off with no negative impact now on the other side if you do have money to make payments you can make a huge dent in the amount of debt that you are able to pay off because any money that you pay towards your student loans will go first to any unpaid interest and then secondly to the principal. So you might be wondering, what do you mean by unpaid interest? So before this all started, you were accruing, accruing interest on a daily basis. And so let's say within the month of February, you accrued like $100 of unpaid interest. That will be on your account. And you'll still also have your balance or your principal, which might be $10,000, for example. So if you wanted to make a $200 payment now or any time during the no interest period or the no payment suspension period, which you know lasts until September 30th, if you made a $200 payment, $100 of that would go towards the unpaid interest, and then the remaining $100 will then go towards your principal balance. Now let's say you made another payment of $200. So at this point, you have no unpaid interest because you paid it all with the last payment. And so now the entire $200 is going to your remaining balance of $9,900. So you're essentially able to pay down your balance a lot faster and have all your payments essentially once you have your unpaid interest paid off, you'll have all of that go towards your principal. So it's an awesome time to try and fast track your debt payoff. Here are some additional benefits of the CARES Act for your student loan. So if you are in default of your student loans, the six months of suspended payments will actually be credited 
towards the nine months of rehabilitation that you have to usually be under. So essentially, you only have three months of rehabilitation that you need to do instead of the full nine because those six months will be credited to you kind of as free. Then if you have any collection due to defaulted student loans that require wage garnishment or tax refund seizures, that actually will not happen during this time. So this is also great news because you'll be able to take home all your paycheck if you are still receiving income and you'll be able to use your entire refund check and your stimulus check for that matter without worrying about any wage garnishments due to defaulted student loans. So those are some other benefits of the CARES Act on your student loan. Earlier I told you that there might be a way for you to qualify for the relief under the CARES Act if you have any federal student loans that are not owned by the Department of Education. So the way you can do that is actually by doing a direct consolidation. So what that means is that they're actually going to take all of your loans that are federally owned and then consolidate them into like one major lump sum loan. So typically when you have student loans, they have like different loans for whenever you were dispersed money. So you might have gotten one loan, you know, in 2010, and then another in 2011 or 2012, but they all are housed by typically one student loan service provider, but they're always kind of categorized and broken down into each disbursement. So what they're gonna do is take all of the different loan disbursements that you had under FFEL or the Department of Health and they're going to consolidate them into one big major loan under the direct consolidation program. And then they will become eligible for the relief under the CARES Act. So that means that you will no longer have to make payments from, from March 13th to September 30th, and you will no longer accrue interest on your student loans between March 13th and September 30th. So the sooner you do this, the better because you'll be able to take advantage of this program for much longer. You might be wondering, should you even consolidate your FFEL or your Department of Health student loans into a direct consolidated loan owned by the Department of Education to be able to qualify for the CARES Act? And I would say yes. And the reason for that is because you'll be able to spend your payments until September and you won't accrue any interest on your loans until September. And you also regain a lot of the benefits of having a federally backed student loan, such as all the payment plans, and if any other you know, loan forgiveness programs were to happen in the future that only apply to federal student loans, you're already in the best situation possible for that. So it's really important that you act now if you want to do that because if you wait until after September 30th, your interest rates will be back to a normal rate and you will also still have to make payments. So do it now so that way you can maximize the most amount of time during this six month period where no one has to pay any payments or accrue any interest on their federal student loans. So if you're in this situation, act now. If you want to learn more information about anything that's talked about Go to the link right here at studentaid.gov slash <laughs> to find out more information about how you can maneuver during this time with the CARES Act. As you may know, I have about $53,000 of federal student loans. I actually do have two FFEL loans. However, they are actually owned by the Department of Education. And then the other, let's see, the other four are actually direct student loans. And so all of my student loans qualify for the relief that's provided by the CARES Act. So you might be wondering, what am I doing with my student loans during this time? My plan is to pay off thousands of dollars of student loans while we have this relief and I'm super ecstatic because that is going to save me thousands of dollars in interest over the years. So that is what I am doing with, your student, with my student loans. 
drop down a comment and let me know what you plan to do with your student loans. And if you have any questions about student loans and how to even deal with your finances during this time, check out this video right here. And I hope that you are subscribed so that I can check you out in the next video.